See that? See that little action? That was pretty good, huh? And then you, you go like this. Kobe! Yeah, so there's a couple tricks to uh, opening a bottle, a wine bottle with a cork, with wax. It's different than beer in the fact that with beer, you have to spend your time cutting all the wax off so you can get your bottle opener. With the wine bottle with wax, the easiest way to deal with the wax is just to pretend it's not there. Just go right, go right through it. It'll break away. Oh shit, I almost broke the bottle. That happens sometimes too, but see that, see that little action? That was pretty good, huh? And then you, you go like this. Kobe! So yeah, you know, today we're here to talk about opening bottles of beer, wine, and talk about our, our new product, uh, J.R. Harris. Uh, this is our second collaboration with Patrick Ruse uh, Erosion. So this year, this is Napa Cabernet, farmed in the Atlas Peak, AVA in Napa. Um, again, uh, like in many years past, uh, this is co-fermented with Black Tuesday wort uh, and aged in French oak punchins. So it, it pours still because it's packaged still. Has really good color uh, coming from the Cabernet grape skins out of Atlas Peak. This one is uh, a little less oak forward than the last couple years, but still very oaky and very prevalent on the on the nose. Um, a good a good amount of grape skin character for sure. So it smells uh, very much like wine. You know, I, I think that this one, boy, tons of leather, tons of oak, a lot of red fruit. Uh, I think this. I think this might be my favorite in the last couple years, actually. I think these beers are one of the more, most exciting things we're doing here at the brewery right now because we're really taking the best of two worlds that historically aren't friendly with each other. Not, not that they're not friendly, but they're not best friends with each other. You're also taking two very different beverages and making one that has the best of both worlds. A lot of the times I think with grape beers, it can feel a little disjointed. It can feel like you have, you know, X beer with grapes in it. But I think this beer really comes together as a good cohesive unit. First thing you know, like the nose on this beer is just, smells like a fantastic wine. It smells really dark and rich. And I think the Black Tuesday and the notes that um, are present in there actually add a lot to the wine grapes. I don't know if you guys can see it, but this beer has really fantastic legs. In the glass, it actually looks just like a glass of, like a big red wine. This is a spectacular beer. The, um, the sweetness of the wine really just accentuates everything that makes the base beer fantastic. And neither of them really overpower each other. The wine really, it subdues some of the bigger chocolate notes, some of the ashy notes, but by doing that, it adds a lot of complexity. It makes it a very unique beer that won't overpower to go great with a steak, any kind of, you know, rack of ribs even. It's not, it doesn't need to be for a fancy occasion. This would be a great bottle to share with your friends, your family. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're here to talk about Recolt. Again, when you're opening these still wine beers that are packaged in, in wine bottles with cork, this is really easy wax to get off if you wanted to just pop it out. But again, the best way to deal with this is just to pretend the wax isn't there and just go right through it. It'll usually just break off. In this case, it just broke because it's just a little it's just a little dime on the top of the bottle. Ooh, that was a nice sound. It's like it's saying, hello, drink me. So Recolte is um, really dark, right? Super inky, boy. That's really good color. So this beer was made at Cheru. So this is a wild beer. Uh, this is a native ferment. So what that means is we bring, in this case, Syrah grapes, and we add wort to those grapes after a four to five day cold maceration. So cold maceration means we leave grapes on the, on their own skins in the juice. Uh, we're extracting color and tannins during that time. And then we blend uh, freshly brewed wort, uh, more of a lambic style wort, into uh, said grapes. And then we let the fermentation take off natively. So this is native fermented, old world technique, uh, but essentially letting all the microflora from the vineyard and the grapes uh, ferment both the wine and beer portion of this uh, co-fermentation. So uh, for, for Recolt, um, we actually sourced these Syrah grapes um, from the Santa Maria Valley. And it's really interesting because when they come in, we, we treat this beer just like a wine at the beginning. So we get the grapes and we process them and we destem the grapes. And then what we'll do is we'll take it through a process for the first couple days where we'll actually 
do our best to try to prevent a full fermentation because we don't want the wine grapes to just start fermenting because we're gonna make it as a wine beer hybrid. We'll kind of use some methods to halt the full fermentation, but that way the grapes are starting to try to break down, starting to try to ferment. And then what we'll do is we'll actually blend in, we'll blend in a beer and then in this case, it's actually a sour blonde ale that we blend it with and so it actually ferments with the sugars of the grape and the sugars of the wort together at the same time. So we're able to have this wine beer hybrid that's still fermenting in a very, very wine fashion. On the nose, it's, uh, you know, it's fruit forward. There's not a lot of oak in the, in the true example of the wine beer hybrid this year. Um, there generally isn't a ton of oak, uh, but this year even less than, than previous years. Aromatically old world cellar, if you will. Like it reminds me of some Spanish wines. It just has this little bit of cellar funk to it that I think is really interesting. Oh, look at that color. The color is absolutely beautiful. Just a really, really burgundy color. Absolutely gorgeous. Looking at it in the glass, it just looks so dark. Oh, right up front, the nose on it is absolutely fantastic. It's incredibly sweet. The Syrah grapes are so prominent and so strong. It's got really great legs on it as well, which I'm gonna want that from any wine that I drink. So any beer wine hybrid, I want the same. It looks great. Oh, it's beautiful. Right up front, it's, I get a lot of sweet grape right up front but it has this kind of a, a nice astringency as well. Something that I would expect from like a nice kind of bold red wine. It's not, it's not gonna, it's not drinking like a Chianti, but it's also not drinking like a Pinot Noir. Like it's not completely fruit forward, but it's not completely dry. It's got this nice bold balance where you get a little bit of tart, but I get so much, so much wine. On the palate, it shows a little bit more acidity than our cleaner our cleaner beer wine hybrids, but I think the acidity is pretty dialed. This is not an overpowering uh, product. This is a more food friendly option than than say something like J.R. Harris's. I think that's a bigger and bolder flavor. This is more nuanced and would, would pair really well with with your goat cheese type things. You know, something that's a little bit a little bit sour and a little bit funky uh, would would really play well with this. Thing.